Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. Mega, 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 mega transfer portal update. Okay. There was so much that happened in the transfer portal this weekend, and I wouldn't be doing my job if I did not talk about it right now in the here and now. Now, it's worth noting a couple things. If you're just joining this show, we already talked about Amari Williams' commitment to Kentucky. So if you missed that, go back and listen to the show. We'll get the clip up on YouTube as well. Uh, we also did a separate clip on Cannon Carlisle, High four-star guard, top 30 prospect, last year played at Stanford. He committed to Indiana. I'm the only person in the national media. I like what Indiana has done this offseason. I think their guards are pretty good. People are saying they have no shooting. I don't buy that narrative. I explained why. I think Indiana has a chance to be actually pretty good next year. But we already did some standalone stuff on those two. And so let's go ahead and talk about some of the other major moves from this weekend. Because I'll say this, it's visit time. As I said, it's sort of panic time. I think it's panic time, by the way, for both players and programs. Players just want to know where they're going. They want to, you know, they know that if I don't commit right now, if I take my time, that opportunity that I have, you know, if I'm being recruited by whoever, Kansas, Arkansas, Kentucky, Illinois, whatever. If I don't make that commitment right now, if I want to take, this isn't high school recruiting. You can't take five visits. And so right now, it's kind of like the players like, okay, I kind of like what I'm hearing. And the coaches are kind of like, we need players. And so there was a lot of moves, a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff happening over the course of this weekend. So let's go ahead and dive into the big ones. The biggest one to me, I would argue this weekend, was the decision by Elijah Martin, who was a big part of the Florida Atlantic Final Four team he ends up committing to the Florida Gators. So first off, credit, listen, credit to, to Todd Golden, okay? And I said this during the season, and I also said it um, during the John Calipari replacement search at Kentucky. Once you got past that first tier of guys, the Dan Hurleys, the Scott Drews, you start to get to that second, third tier. I said, I like what Todd Golden is doing. He has a vision. He know how he wants his, he wants to run his program. He knows the types of players that he's looking for. And I really like what he's doing. Well, I would argue he picked up his most important portal commitment of this offseason on Sunday morning when Elijah Martin committed to the Gators. I think everybody, if you love college basketball, you at least know the name Elijah Martin. 13 points per game, six boards, 34% three-point shooting this year at Florida Atlantic. Um, interesting to note, those numbers are actually about the same as his junior year. Three point shooting was actually a little bit better, uh, a season ago, 13 points per game, same number, five rebounds per game, 37% shooting from three. So this guy can play on the ball. He can play off the ball, you know, 13, 14 point a game score for a final four team, two years ago, 13 point a game score for an NCAA tournament team this year. The only thing that's really interesting to me is that he did in an interview with Jonathan Gavoni, ESPN, say they're bringing me in to play point guard. Now, he's about 6'2", 6'3", so obviously at the next level, he needs to be able to play point guard. I don't know that he's necessarily a one, and I think that'll be interesting, but I will say if it works, I really like Florida's personnel. Walter Clayton, who obviously came from my own last offseason, was an all-SEC guy. He is back. Um, will Richard, who was good this year, is back. They just added the center that I mentioned from Washington. I'm going to butcher his last name, but his first name is or Washington State, excuse me. Um, Ruben, really like him. Just athletic, plays hard, energy, everything that you could possibly want. Um, he is committed as well. And I'll tell you this, I said it a minute ago. I'm putting together my way too early top 25. Florida is going to be in the top 20. I, I, I Listen, I don't know that when all the dust settles, I think Kentucky might have a better roster. I think Arkansas might have a better roster. Uh, Tennessee is always going to be good. Auburn's going to be good. Alabama, who we'll get to in a minute, is going to be good. But Florida, man, I, I really do give Todd Golden credit, man. I was critical of him 
when he took the job. I didn't love the hire, but he has been really good. Got Florida to the tournament this year. They add Elijah Martin on Sunday. Let's keep it going. The producer Matt special. That's what we're calling this one. That is because on Saturday afternoon, Aiden Holloway. Aiden Holloway. Do you remember the name? McDonald's All-American. Played the last year at Auburn. Oh, he went full turncoat, full Benedict Arnold, and I'm just kidding. I'm not trying to criticize a kid for doing what he thinks is best. But after playing one year at Auburn, he decides to flip, and he is headed to Alabama to play for Nate Oates, okay? Now, it's interesting because how you look at this kid, it, you know, you could really look at it one of two ways, okay? He was a McDonald's All-American. He wasn't great, and his numbers did go down as the season went on. I couldn't find the quote, but he basically said something on the record about, I didn't think that I was used right. I know that rubbed Auburn fans the wrong way. I think understandably so. I think he had his opportunities. I didn't think he fully took advantage of them late in the year. And he did struggle to shoot the ball. He only shot 30% from three, 31% from the field. That's not good enough. But he's six foot one, skinny, 175 pounds. And I do think he's probably, listen, not every McDonald's All-American is a one-and-done, Paulo Bancaro, uh, Reed Shepard type guy. You know, like some guys take time. And I look at this kid, I think he's a really good college basketball player. It might take three years, but he's super quick, can get to the rim, can finish at the rim, seven points, three assists per game, and only 20 minutes of play this year. I think he has a chance to be really good in that Alabama system. Now, it's also worth noting in that Alabama system, what is what does this say? Does this say that potentially Mark Sears could not be back in Tuscaloosa next year? Mark Sears has declared for the draft. Uh, he has left the option to return to college open. But Mark Sears obviously played at an All-American level, especially late. I mean, I, I know I know, talking to the UConn people at the Final Four, they were like blown away. They were like, that's the best guard we've faced maybe all year. 21 points per game for Mark Sears. You know what he did at Alabama. But is Aiden Holloway coming in to back up Mark Sears? Or does Nate Oates think, I'm losing this guy to the NBA draft and I need to make sure that I have somebody to replace him? I like Aiden Holloway. I, I, I don't think the Auburn situation was perfect for him. I don't think that makes him a bad person or a bad player, but he does end up committing. A couple other interesting notes, and I lost all my notes here, so I'm trying to just do this off the top of my head. Um, but the Big Ten. Big Ten not really known as as, as Portal 101 kind of, uh, you know, stomping grounds. But I bring it up because it was a very active weekend in the Big Ten, a Big Ten traditional school and a Big Ten new school. Let's start with Michigan and Dusty May. First off, let me say this. Don't know if it's true. There was a report that John L. Davis, who was Dusty May's best player at Florida Atlantic. We just talked about Elijah Martin. John L. Davis played with him. There was a report that John L. Davis was not admitted by the University of Michigan. Don't know if that's true. I've only seen it from one source. Don't know if it's accurate. But this has been a problem at Michigan. Last offseason, Caleb Love commits to Michigan. Oh, not going to let him in. Two years ago, Terrence Shannon Jr. commits to Michigan. Oh, don't let him in. He ends up at Illinois, leads him to the Elite Eight this year. By the way, from the football perspective, Xavier Worthy, five-star wide receiver, couldn't get into school, ends up at Texas, helps them to a college football playoff. For Michigan football, it worked out okay. But Dusty May, so we'll see on John L. Davis, but it also doesn't change the fact that Dusty May had a very good weekend. By the way, if you're not, if you see the scroller, make sure. CBB transfers on Twitter for all of your latest transfer portal news. CBB transfers on Instagram. We just started the Instagram page as well. Uh, about to hit 200 followers. You want to be one of the first 200 people? You can tell your grandkids about it. Follow CBB Transfers on Instagram as well. But let's get back to Michigan. Interesting weekend for them. I think they got four. I don't think. I know. They got four commitments total over the course of the weekend. First one was a high school player. Uh, it was Justin Pippen, the son of Scotty Pippen. Since this is a portal segment, we'll save that one for, for you know another time. They also added a nice guard from North Texas named Ruben Jones. But then they got to work. Our guy Dusty May, man, it's getting a little dusty in here because he was making moves this, this weekend. The first name that you need to know, uh, Danny Wolf, a big guy who played the last two years at Yale. 
Averaged 14 points, nine and a half boards per game, 34% three-point shooting. Now, I'll be honest. I like Danny Wolf. I don't know that I love him. You know, he played at Yale, and I had a million UConn fans hit me up. Should we be going after him? What do you think? Blah, 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 this and that. I think he's a good four-year college player. I think the Ivies are not generally a springboard to, like, elite high major success. But he averaged 14 and, and 10. I think he'll be good at Michigan. He's got two years of eligibility. I suspect it will be a two-year deal for him. Um, and I think the only concern I would have, you know, he was okay against high major competition, 13 points in that win over Auburn in the NCAA tournament, nine points and 10 boards against San Diego State. But you could tell San Diego State kind of was able to get into him and limit what he did. Uh, but good commitment from Michigan. And then also on Sunday, speaking of Auburn, we just talked about Aiden Holloway. Well, Trey Donaldson, the other lead guard at Auburn, who also at the portal commits to Michigan. Another guy didn't play a ton. Bruce Pearl's going to play 12, 13 guys over the course of a game. But I really liked what I saw from Trey Donaldson, 6'3 sophomore, just finished his second year at Auburn, averaged seven points per game, three and a half assists per game. And he is a player, um, you know, that, that I like. And, and I think, you know, it's all relative. I think some guys are good at some levels, and I think Trey Donaldson will be a very good guard in the Big Ten. So good job from Dusty May. He needs to revamp that roster. We'll see on John L. Davis. I'll be honest, if he gets Chanel Davis, I think we're potentially talking about like a top 25 team based on the roster that he's put together. But there's speculation that he might not be eligible. By the way, that is a name that has emerged for Kentucky uh, if he cannot get eligible. So we will see what happens there. Oh boy, we just got ourselves a little bit of a piece of transfer portal news as according to Jeff Borzello in real time, Jeremy Roach is committed to Baylor. This is per Jeremy Roach's Instagram. I think it's a Tipton edit, so it's not official until Joe Tipton makes you an edit. Um, uh, you know, but I'm trying to see this in real time and very much so two minutes ago per Joe Tipton. Jeremy Roach has committed to Baylor. Um, listen, so we've seen the reports out about, first of all, I really like Jeremy Roach a lot, okay? Um, I really like Jeremy Roach a lot. Veteran point guard. I've said since he got in the portal that I believe he is one of the best players in the portal. Four-year college basketball player, 14 points per game, three assists per game, and, you know, just a guy who's, who's, whose role is, evolved at Duke. Now I was surprised when he hit the portal, but this to me was one of the best players, 14 points a game, 42% shooting from three, which I thought was important. And he obviously was looking for another option. Now there was speculation about the NIL number. Uh, he put out a tweet that said, it's not even close. Don't, don't believe everything you read on the internet, but I really like Jeremy Roach. And I'll say this, the, the last couple of years, I haven't totally loved the roster that Baylor has put together. But at the same time, this year, I do like it for the following reasons. You bring back a veteran wing in Jalen Bridges. You bring in VJ Edgecombe. I'll tell you this, I'm not a recruiting expert, but there, there's about three guys in this 2024 high school class that people are like, oh, those dudes are different. Cooper Flag, Ace Bailey, who is committed to play for Rutgers. And the third one that everybody says is VJ Edgecombe. V They're like, VJ Edgecombe is a dude. And so now you have the veteran point guard in Jeremy Roach, VJ Edgecombe, the two. You have Jalen Bridges. You got a couple big guys down low. I actually like how this Baylor roster is coming together quite a bit. I think Baylor, probably when I update my top 25, my uh, way too early top 25, I think Baylor's probably going to be a top 10 team. Really quickly, let's get back on track here as we got late breaking news. I got to always be monitoring social media as I'm doing this show. Um, but I bring it up because I said there are two uh, programs in the Big Ten that made major moves in the portal this weekend. The other one outside of Michigan. It was. Do you remember who's in the Big Ten going into next year? The USC Trojans. That's right. You see the must bus Eric Musselman. You see the name, you see the picture, and USC, I thought, had a great weekend in the portal. Now, Muss has had made a few additions prior to this weekend, but the big one that he added over the course of the last couple of days, 
St. Thomas. Not the country, not the island, no relation to Kim Kardashian's kid, okay? St. Thomas was at, uh, at Northern Colorado this year, six foot seven wing, played the previous two years at Loyal of Chicago, goes to Northern Colorado, balls out. 19 points, nine rebounds per game, shot 33% from the, from the three-point line, good but not great. But that is the kind of guy you need in the Big Ten to have success in year one for USC under Eric Musselman. On top of that, St. Thomas was actually the third player that committed to USC this weekend. Matt Noling, another Yale guy. We just talked about Danny Wolf from Yale. But Matt Noling, a name to know. Uh, he's kind of a, I, he's a Connecticut kid. Actually had a high school coach in Connecticut reach out to me to kind of just share his thoughts on him. I think he's a role player, backup type guy, but athletic wing, going to defend. Uh, also worth noting, Bryce Pope, one of the best three-point shooters in college basketball this past year, played at UC San Diego. That's the same conference as uh, as Gonzaga. Uh, I take that back. I think I said he's one of the best three-point shooters. Uh, and by the way, I, I take back everything I said on the kid. I thought they played in the same conference as Gonzaga. That is actually the University of San Diego. This is UC San Diego. But Bryce Pope averaged 18 points per game, 34% three-point shooting. And so listen. I give Musk credit, by the way. They added the kid from Penn, Clark Slyshirt, who averaged 18 per game. He is an elite shooter. Um, Musk just needs bodies. Andy Enfield leaves for SMU. Uh, Musk comes in. Musk needs bodies. They get bodies. Uh, and they had, I thought, a really good weekend. I think they're putting together a very nice roster. They obviously need some bigs. They need some size. They brought Josh Cohen. Remember, Josh Cohen was the kid that committed to Musk at Arkansas. Now, Josh Cohen uh, decides to end up uh, uh, following Musk to USC. So I think they have five portal commitments so far. And overall, um, just like the roster they're putting together, what's going to be interesting with USC, is there a situation where they end up taking Trent Perry? Remember, Trent Perry was the McDonald's All-American that was committed to Andy Enfield. He opened his recruitment and Andy Enfield left. Can Musk keep that kid? But I really like the, the, the group that Musk is putting together. Veteran guys, experienced guys, shooting, spacing, defense, energy, hustle. The St. Thomas kid, I think, will be their leading scorer next year, depending on what else happens. couple other notes before we get out of here. One, Friday was a fascinating day at Xavier, okay? And it was fascinating from this perspective, is that um, it, it was fascinating because early in the day, they lose Desmond Claude to the transfer portal. Desmond Claude was probably by far their best returning player. Kid from Connecticut, from New Haven, beautiful New Haven. Uh, averaged 16 points per game this year, four rebounds, not a great three-point shooter. He hits the portal. And then almost immediately after that, Ryan Conwell, who was the second leading scorer on Indiana State's uh, NIT runner-up team, ends up committing to Xavier. Ryan Conwell, 16 points per game himself, 41% three-point shooting. And so I'll just say this. Listen, I've been around college hoops for a long time. I think I, I haven't talked to Sean Miller. Sean Miller is a, you know, I consider him a friend. I like Sean. Um, I haven't talked to him. These coaches are too smart, though. And my guess is he probably told Desmond Cloud, he's like, if you're going to hit the portal, that's fine. Let's make sure our replacement for you is lined up. We can't have all the negative news, all the bad press. We're going to have this lined up. So Ryan Conwell commits the same day that Des Claude leaves. Also worth noting, by the way, with Ryan Conwell, he played at Indiana State. Indiana State's most notable player for sure, Robbie Avila. Of course, that's the kid they call Cream Abdul-Jabbar. Big, tall, 6'11 kid, goggles, whatever. He ends up following Josh Schertz, the Indiana State coach, to St. Louis. That is your Sunday Transfer Portal update with some live breaking news uh, in real time. By the way, Matt Norlander says more big names coming soon for Baylor. Scott Drew's roster may be top five before long. I do know Jonas Adu was visiting this weekend, so it sounds like uh, Baylor uh, is not done in the portal. 